In the last video, we talked about how to make the Godot icon rotate in a circle. You may want to watch that video before this one, but you are free to watch this without doing so, if you want. In this video going through the documentation, we are going to give our player some agency. It's not really a game if you don't get to control it, now is it? Before we get started, I wanted to thank you again for supporting the channel. If you haven't done so, please like and subscribe to help us keep going. Thanks again. And unfortunately, I made that script in such a way that when I dragged the icon in, I did not change the name, so it just took the name of the icon. You may have gotten a different result. I'm just going to click on the script and press F2 and just change the name to be in line with what you may have. It is not necessary to do this step. In order for you to be able to move our player around, we want to listen to when the player presses a key. But how do we do that? We are going to need to modify the sprite2d.gd script that we made in the last video. There are at least two ways you can get player input. One way would be to use the underscore unhandled input callback that Godot has built in. It's like process in that it's a virtual function, that we only need to define it, and Godot handles the rest. We could do it this way, but we would have to write code like this. Or we could just use the input singleton, which is simple and clean, which is the way it's making me feel tonight. A singleton is just a design pattern. It means that for any one instance of an object in code, there will only ever be one instance. We don't need to worry about the details of how that works for now. Input is globally accessible in Godot. This means that you don't have to write much additional code, as it is handled for you already, and you can access it from any script. Input is how you want to check whether a player has pressed a key on a frame. Let's think about what we want to do before we write our code. We want the icon to not be moving before the player pressed a key, right? Because when we do press a key, the player should then move. So then we will need a way to know that the player is pressing a key, and which direction that key is supposed to map to. If we go back to our script, before the code that updates our rotation, we are going to create a new variable and call it direction inside of the method. Let's default the variable to zero. The reason why we want to do that is so that each time that process is called, we want to start in a neutral position and then decide if we want to go a direction or not. Next, let's write an if statement. And the condition for this? Well, the input object actually has a built in method called isActionPressed. Let's call it here, as it returns a Boolean value. So let's type is dot action pressed and give it an argument. Now for this, we are going to pass in a value that Godot has defined for us. It's called UI left. We actually can set our own values, but we will see how to do that at a later time. The defaults will work for now. The arguments that go here are string values as you are really just telling Godot what to look for when it's doing its work in the background. Now that we have checked which way we are pressing, let's update the direction variable. It should be minus 1, because if we are moving minus 1 in the x direction then, we are moving left. Now let's just repeat it by doing all that again for the right side. Write an if statement with input, dot is action pressed, and pass in UI right. Don't forget to update the direction to be positive now. Now we can update our rotation to include a multiplication of our direction. If you do a little quick math here, you should see how this works. Now if we play the game, we will see our guy moving forward, but you can turn him around and move him in 2D space. Now let's make it so that the icon doesn't just move without us pressing a key. This would be a great place to pause the video and give it a try for yourself. I'll give you a hint. You will need to pass in UI up. The logic is exactly the same as what we just did. All right, let's walk through how we can do that. Let's start by setting the velocity to zero on each frame before we press a key. Let's take everything to the right of the var velocity assignment and just copy it for a second. Normally, copy and pasting things isn't the best of ideas, but it will be fine for a moment. The easiest way to set this variable to be zero, since it is a vector two, is to use a built-in vector type. Simply type vector two dot zero, just like this. This will assign it to a vector 2 whose values are all 0. Now let's write another input dot is action pressed conditional and pass in UI up. In this conditional, let's assign the velocity variable to what we copied. 
On each frame that passes, we are setting our velocity to zero. Then we are checking if a key is pressed, and if it is, we will update our velocity. Otherwise, it stays zero. Then we update our position by adding our velocity, multiplied by the delta time. You did it. You now have a playable character. That will do it for this video. If you enjoyed this content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And thanks for making it all the way through the video.